Hello everybody and once again welcome to Synonomics. Wall Street had a stellar run and so has other markets of the world. But today I'm here to talk more about Apple. Yes, you have heard it right. Apple was downgraded from buy to neutral by UBS. And that was the reason why when Dow was up 146 points, Nasdaq was up 111 points and S&P was up 30 points Apple was down, uh, not much, but 0 0.5, well, like 50, 60 cents. So it closed at around 182 point something. So not a big deal. Having said that, the price target has been increased from 180 to 190. Well, I'll talk a little bit about that, but let me give you a quick update on why Wall Street was jubilant, right? The CPI data, which everybody was waiting, I did cover in my previous update as well, Everybody was waiting eagerly because this will determine what Fed is going to do on 15th, uh, tomorrow by the way. So the CPI data came pretty cool, 4.0% year over year growth as compared to the expectation of 4.1%. Month over month, it was 0.1%. And 4.0% by the way, is two year low. And that's why the market was quite happy about it. When you look at the core inflation data, that includes food and energy. That was at 5.3% as compared to 5.2% expected. Well, pretty cool, pretty, pretty close, I would say that. And this was from month to month perspective, it was 0.4%, which was pretty much aligned with the expectation. So overall, the data was pretty cool. And many of the banks, in fact, have started easing it now. So China, China Reserve Bank or Central Bank, whatever it's called, actually they cut the rate. Having said that, in Europe, they are expecting to increase the rate by the bankers. India, on the other hand, is pretty much on pause and Australia will kind of follow suit, I would say. The Australia is continuously increasing, by the way, just for information. Well, let's get back to Apple now. So Apple was downgraded because of the softer outlook for iPhone and services. Many analysts find it a bit funny, but hey, I will give credit to this guy who actually pull out his neck and giving something like a contrary analysis. Let me remind you that out of all the analysts, 67% have put Apple on buy, 31% on hold, and only 2% on sell. So, if you look at the logic, if you look at it from the other perspective as well, the Apple actually has grown 40% from the pricing perspective. So the price has increased 40% this year. Having said that, in the Magnificent 7, pretty much it's a laggard. Look at tes Tesla, look at uh, Nvidia, look at you know others as well like Meta. They are pretty much at a very 100 plus point increase which i'm not going to repeat because i have covered that in my previous video some of you who have missed it please watch seven magnificent ones or the magnificent seven as it's called apple on the other hand if you look at the revenue 394 billion 78 billion comes from services in fact services is growing and even though there is slight blip in that i mean that's not a big deal in my personal opinion having said that who are these people by the way warren buffett rightly says actually he had said once that he's surprised that wall street is a place where billionaires come in rolls royce and take advice from people who come on subways subways by the way if you don't understand some of you is the local train in us so yes, billionaires come and they get advice how to make money, how to manage their money with these guys who can't afford a car. They are coming in the subway. Well, Warren Buffett has been very candid. I don't want to get there. I have no personal opinion. I have a lot of respect for analysts. I am one of those and I have worked as an analyst before. So coming back to the point, if you see and if you believe in that and you see the other side of the story, I mean, it makes sense, right? It had a stellar run, 40% higher this year. Maybe it's time to take off some chips from the table and you know, put it somewhere else. But where will you go? 
Nvidia is trading at pretty much astronomical valuations and it's continuing its run. Yesterday it actually closed at 410. Yes, you have already tried 410 and that's the, almost the highest close. Though it's 52 week high is 419, it just touched for a while and dropped. But the close from the close perspective, this was the highest close as far as I understand. If you look at uh, Tesla, it's a close at almost 259. Remember in my previous Tesla video, I did say that there is room to grow. It can hit 300 and Tesla pretty much increased eight, nine dollar yesterday. So, well, where will you invest? Having said that, if you really look at that, there are other opportunities also like Broadcom. Yes, Broadcom actually make chips and 20% of its revenue comes from Apple. Maybe that's an area to look at it. If you are talking about chip or chipsets, there are other companies as well like Qualcomm and the most important and pretty much in the news is TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor, which is the manufacturing brain, I would call it, or the foundry. That's the same as semiconductor foundry for NVIDIA. Having said that, guys, TSM you cannot buy on Wall Street. You can buy ADR. Yes, because TSM is listed in Taiwan. And that's the reason even I have not invested in TSM, to be frank with you. Also, there has been a lot of uh, conflict going on between China and Taiwan. So everybody is worried about TSM and now TSM is setting up their factory, their plant in US and multiple locations. I will cover, I'll cover in one of my videos, TSM, Taiwan Semiconductor. At the same time, Broadcom had a stellar run as well. In the last one month, I would call it, it has gone from something like three, 400 to 800. Just after Apple announced that they are going to get all their chips coming out from that for 5G or 6G, whatever, 5G, I think. Sorry for that. So I will cover that in my subsequent videos, Broadcom and TSM. In the meantime, I personally feel it's a buying opportunity for Apple. If you go and look at Apple graph, it's a continuous straight line upwards at 45 degrees. How many stocks are there like that in today's environment? Even the one that we are talking about is Nvidia or Tesla. They have a very zigzag pattern. They're very volatile, by the way, guys. Apple is silent operator, keeps continuously going up. Of course, since I've been talking about that in the YouTube, I've never seen Apple going 10% up or down, you know, or 5% up and down. It, it keeps moving two, three, four dollars, that's it. But it continuously goes up. If you look at the chart from any of the perspective, Heikinashi, if you look at Heikinashi, if you look at uh, Ichimoku, it's actually showing further up, further run. So I, I have no doubt that it will actually hit 190 very soon. And in fact, I feel that if there is no big turbulence in the market because of the Fed or any other reasons, I think very soon you'll see Apple above 200. Yes, you have already tried. For some of you who are new, let me remind you, Apple split is share one to four. So just two years back, Apple actually split his share. He also split earlier, but we'll not go into that. It was quite far away. So Apple, frankly, is trading at around 750, 780. So some of you who bought Apple in 2020, 2021, etc., are having four of them. If you bought one, you have four of them. So the price is almost there. Well, for some of you, the value guys, let me tell you, the price earning ratio, the forward price earning ratio is 29.9, roughly 29x for Apple, which for the Magnificent 7 is not high. Trust me. If you really want to go get into an IT company, a technology company with a much lower price earning ratio, you may consider Hewlett Packard Enterprise or HP Inc. Yeah, they are also a little bit moving up after they actually came and said that they are also in the game of AI. Hewlett Packard CEO actually came and said, hey, we are also working on the AI, our computer, so that, you know, Excel and everything will work pretty much 
on the AI. You won't have to do the analysis yourself. You don't have to remember and learn on these formulas. You can say, hey, do this analysis and Excel will do that for you. Do this analysis, Excel will. So they're working with the ch chip companies. They're working with the manufacturers as well as their R&D is working on that. And since he said that, the market is up. <laughs> Antonio, uh, Antonio Neri, like when he, uh, the, the CEO of uh, HPE, when he said that, yes, we also have uh, a share in the AI play, which we do, uh, HPE does have actually, the market is a little bit up. They're pretty much at around 1660. And HPQ, which is HP Inc, is, has crossed 30. It's 52 week high, by the way, is 35 plus. So very soon they will hit there as well. Well, with that, I'll give rest to my video now. If you have liked this, don't forget to share and subscribe. And remember, these are my personal opinion. They are not recommendations. So before making any investment decision, don't forget to consult your financial advisor. This channel is meant to create financial awareness so that you can act on it and get rich. With that, thank you everybody for watching. Have a great day. Bye-bye.